Hello, and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have a quick one today on something I'll have more to talk about down the road, but I want to put out this brief video first because it really addresses some open questions that have been pretty important for this whole conversation over the last few years. The background here is that Dr. Nathaniel Jensen appeared on a YouTube show called Apologetics Live on June 2nd, 2022. This is a call-in show where viewers can join, ask questions, and have conversations with guests. Dr. Jensen, as you may know, is the author of Replacing Darwin, and most recently, as of this recording, Traced, in addition to a number of papers, papers for Answers Research Journal, the journal put out by Answers in Genesis. The common thread here in Dr. Jensen's work is using the mutation rates in human DNA to calculate a timeline for humanity that lines up with the young earth chronology of Answers in Genesis. As viewers may know, I've been wanting to talk to Dr. Jensen for years, so I hopped onto the Apologetics Live show and ended up staying on with him for about an hour. I've linked the full show down below if you want to watch the entire conversation. I asked several questions, didn't really get answers to most of them. But I want to highlight one brief moment here. Take a look. So let me, let me again derive how I'm getting to this point. So we've got my claim from the examination of the published literature that the mutation rate is three mutations per generation. And I'm treating the mutation rate as a substitution rate, that this rate right. is consistent. Thank you. That's what, thank you. That's what I'm doing. This has been the objection made by me and others regarding Dr. Jensen's work for years, that he treats a per-generation mutation rate, the rate at which mutations occur, as a substitution rate, the rate at which mutations achieve fixation within a population. When a mutation becomes fixed, that means that 100% of the members of a population have that mutation in their genome. Another way to think of this distinction is that the mutation rate is the rate at which mutations occur, and the substitution rate is the the rate at which mutations accumulate over generations. The objection to Jensen's work has to do with how he calculates what's called the time to most recent common ancestor, or TMRCA, for the human mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome. He arrives at a date of about 6,000 years and about 4,500 years ago for those two measures, in contrast to the consensus dates of 1 to 200,000 years ago for the mitochondrial DNA and 2 to 300,000 years ago for the Y chromosome. For years, I and other critics of his work have been saying that he conflates mutation rate and substitution rate in his calculations, extrapolating the per-generation mutation rate backwards in time rather than using the slower substitution rate. While Dr. Jensen has not responded directly, other people have, with various explanations why this isn't the case, why he clearly isn't doing this obviously wrong thing that invalidates his body of work. But here we have Dr. Jensen saying very clearly that he's treating the per-generation mutation rate as the long-term substitution rate. I've covered this in detail before, so I'm not going to go through the nuts and bolts of why this is wrong. If you want the details, I've linked the relevant videos below. But that's actually secondary to the admission that that's what he's doing. This methodological bait and switch is the linchpin of Jensen's work, and more broadly, all the young Earth attempts to fit the breadth of human genetic variation into a young Earth timeline. Openly admitting the move ends the debate over whether these calculations, and by extension, the young Earth timeframes for genetic divergence in Homo sapiens, are valid. The answer is that they are not. So let me wrap this up by telling you how this affects what I do here. It means I don't have any reason to take these calculations seriously, and I get to stop having to convince people that Dr. Jensen actually makes this error. He says, straight up, what he does. That applies to Dr. Jensen's work, and everyone who cites Dr. Jensen's work, and anyone who employs the same methodology in their own work. We now know that these calculations rest on an extremely basic error. The person who did the math told us that. For now, this question is settled. Young Earth creationists have no model that explains the variation and divergence we see across human genomes. And until and unless they generate such a model, this debate is over. Thank you for watching.